This is a first look review at the XDJ XZ or XZ standalone hybrid all-in-one flagship controller from Pioneer DJ. If you're thinking of buying this, you're gonna learn everything you need to know features wise as to whether this could be the controller or DJ system for you in this first look review. I'm gonna cover the decks, the mixer, the extra controls, the inputs and outputs. I'm gonna go through all the menus. We're gonna look at the screen. You're gonna get a very good sense about whether the features you want are on here. At the end of the review, I'm gonna have a look at who this might be good for, who it might be not good for, what I think about it, what it does well, what I think it doesn't do so well. This is not a six month road test. This has only just come out. We've had this for a number of hours, but it's gonna contain everything you need to get that first look, as if you were having a look at it yourself with someone who could talk you through all the features. So let's get stuck right in uh, to the unit. We're gonna go at the decks, then we're gonna go to the mixer, then we're gonna look at the inputs and outputs and other stuff. And finally, we're gonna hone in on that screen and look at how all of that works. Now, the decks are very similar to the Pioneer Nexus CDJ2000s. They are controlled by the same big mechanical jog wheels. They've got a certain amount of information in the display. This would show the track sleeve artwork if this track had artwork. My, most of my tracks don't. Uh, and oh, it's got the, the clock face to show you where you're, where you're going in the track as well. So that's all good. Uh, it's not got quite as much information as some displays have, but what is there works well. The pads down here, four pads in two rows. They control hot cues. and you can use shift to delete the hot cues. This is very standard behavior. You've got your call functionality there if you use the old call system uh, with Pioneer gear, but most people will use the more modern way of doing this stuff. You've got beat loop as well, which, will, uh, which is a on off set of instant loop controls. Slip loop, which is the same as beat loop, but slip mode is also enabled so it keeps the track playing kind of underneath. And beat jumps nice just for jumping backwards and forwards through your track, really good for chopping up back appellas and so on. Uh, so they've got a reasonable amount of stuff there. There's no sampler, there's no slicer, there's none of the stuff that you see on some pretty, uh, pretty advanced software controllers nowadays, but this is a standalone controller. So that's what you're gonna get there. Uh, so you've got your track search and your search, track search, one tap will take you back to the beginning of the track, two taps will take you back in the playlist, uh, and the same in the other direction as well, so you can quickly move through your tracks there. Search is a more gentle search through the track, backwards or forwards there. Again, this is all very standard behavior for this kind of setup. I'm just talking you through the controls in case you're not used to the way this works. Reverse does what it says on the tin. If you press slip mode before you press reverse, it's like a sensor or a momentary reverse. To go backwards but it will jump forwards again to where it would have been before you pressed the button. It's called sensor because people usually use it to sensor out naughty words in tracks. So at the top here we've got pretty standard loop functionality, looping in and out and exit. Uh, you can set an instant four beat loop like that. An instant eight beat loop by holding that in seems to do a single loop by holding it in. Oh, it's just halving it for me. Right, okay, let's start again. In an eight beat loop by holding that all the way in. That's an eight beat loop that's going on there now. And if you do set a loop here, you can also half and double it using the loop half and double controls there. Again, this is very standard Pioneer control for looping. So back to the deck. This has got a speed adjuster here. This will decide how quickly it slows down. You can also set it to how quickly it speeds up. No idea why you'd want that to happen. It's in the utility, we'll look at that in a bit. Uh, you also have a jog adjust, which is for light and heavy feel on the jog wheel. This is quite normal at the moment, but I can have it very light. It takes ages to spin and stop, or can have it very heavy. Just up to you where you like that. Our halfway has always been good for me. Uh, we've got our sync functions here. We can set our master deck, sync with our other decks and with CDJs that might be plugged into it as well. We'll talk about that when we get to the inputs and outputs. Uh, and then 
standard tempo fader here. We've got a tempo reset on it. Master tempo will stop the pitch moving up and down as you move the track speed up and down, or it'll allow the pitch to change with the tempo as well. And you've got a tempo control. You can set it to wide or just stop the track entirely if you set the tempo uh, to wide there. And 100% at the top setting. So quite a nice setting for being creative. Most people will leave that around. Normally uh, one of the first couple of settings to make it easy to, to beat mix your tracks. Uh, you've got your vinyl mode. So that's vinyl mode. That's not vinyl mode. Which is like CDJ mode. Some people prefer to DJ that way. That's pretty much everything you've got on the deck. So let's move away from the decks and let's get that speed adjust back to somewhere that's a little bit more how I like it. And let's move away from the decks. They're both identical, they're both laid out in the same way. And we'll look at the mixer. Let's get a track playing on the other deck. And the mixer has got pretty much everything you'd find on a high-end Pioneer mixer. So we've got the sound color effects, the beat effects, all the usual routing for our four channels. And we've got a few other bits and pieces as well. Let me talk you through exactly what's on here. So this is the channel I'm playing through. You have the trim to get your input level right. We've got our EQs, low, mid and high. Color effects, it's where we find our filter, but also crush, noise, toned down a bit from some time of year in the past, which is nice to know. We have got a parameter effect here though where we can alter how strong the effects are. We've got space, dub echo, he's a post fader, that means that they'll carry on playing after the faders faded out, which is nice, and sweep. my least favorite of the lot actually sweet but anyway the thing about these effects is they're controlled by the knob here you're controlling it now the beat effects are very different they cycle with the beat so the mixer knows the beat of the track and it will set the effect to cycle with that so if I set it to a flanger and then I set it to the master output set it to go every four beats this is a flanger every four beats I'll turn it on one two three four it's resetting after every four beats and you can change that. Again, this is gonna be pretty usual stuff for anyone who's used a mixer like this before, but if you're buying this unit for the first time, there's a lot of creativity here. What I really like about this as well is you get the effects frequencies. You can choose which, which, fre which frequencies the effect is going to affect. So that's pretty cool as well. You could uh, turn off, that's the whole effect turned off now. It's only the low frequency being flanged can be effectively uh, a nice way of keeping the track playing while you're putting something pretty extreme over the top of it. So for instance, if we were to go to the transform effect, which basically cuts the track in and out according to the beat. So let's set the beat to every half beat. That's cutting in and out every half beat. I can leave those vocals unaffected and it's doing the bass and the treble in and out, but leaving the vocals as they are there because I've turned the mid frequency off. You can hear that kind of pumpy noise. And I could turn off, turn it off on the high, that's only on the low frequencies now. And just get it off completely. And you can do that with all of them. There's a lot of nice effects there as well. Uh, certain effects there are also post fader, which is cool. It's just very well implemented. So a little taste of that if you haven't seen it before. I'm sure most of you have seen beat effects. So what else have we got here on the mixer? Well, what we haven't got is our controls for the cross fader, the up faders. Uh, there's none of that stuff on there, but it is, as you're going to find out, not left off. It's just there's no buttons for it, which I find a little bit strange because you know it's a big controller. You'd think they'd have found room to put cross fader curve uh, and line fader curves and all that kind of thing. Split Q is not on there as well. All is not lost, all will be revealed if you're a Split Q fan. All right then, we've got our auxiliary input, which is just off on and there's a trim there. Uh, we've also got channel three and channel four inputs here, uh, which will let you choose between line, phono or computer. However, I have to tell you uh, that this only works on two channels with record box, one and two. Three and four, if you set it to computer, you can use the whole four 
mixer or four mixer channels on Serato and Rekordbox, but uh, it will only work on two channels with the Rekordbox USB. However, if you've got two CDJs, uh, you could plug those in via Link, because Link is on this, it's the first such unit with Link on, then you could have four decks and they could work on decks three and four as well. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to tell you about on the mixer. Uh, let's look at what's going on at the top of the decks, because for mobile DJs, there's a couple of nice things here. So firstly, you've got two full microphone channels with talk over, there's adjustments for talk, for, talk over, we're going to talk about in a bit. Um, these are great because they've got three band EQ, uh, and there's a feedback reducer as well. Now we haven't tested it, but uh, apparently it's pretty cool. Uh, so it will just high, uh, highlight the frequencies where any feedback's occurring and knock them out and you can have it pretty heavy there as well. There's also a setting for turning off the microphone in your booth monitors, which we'll come to come on to in a bit. So really nice microphone settings there for mobile DJs. Over on this side of the controller, another thing I know mobile DJs are gonna love, we've got a master EQ. I can cut or boost low, mids and highs across the master output. Listen. If you've never heard of this before, that is something which I think all DJ gear ought to have on it. Because how many times, if you're a pro DJ, you're nodding already, have you plugged in to a PA or a system where the whole system is not bassy enough, or the whole system is very harsh, and you just want to knock out the mid-range just for the whole set, for everything you do that night? But you have to do it on your main mixer, so you're, you spend you end up DJing with like the mids at nine o'clock or the bass at three o'clock or whatever it takes to to equalise the system. And you don't want that. You want your EQs to be central there. These are creative EQ controls. They're not for equalizing the room. Well, you can equalize the room here now. I think that's really, really cool. And the settings as to whether that affects the booth and the master or just the master, uh, which we'll come on to in a bit. This is really, really nice. Obviously you have got a booth control, so there's a booth volume there, but remember that, good feature. Uh, you can also use Q. You can stick this through your headphones and compare it to, uh, to anything else and see, see the difference that those controls are making for you. Over here, we've got all the USB stuff. Uh, and you can also plug in a second USB, so you can have two DJs playing back to back here, switching between each other, but also that you can put another USB into number two and you can record your set here as well, which is a really nice addition. So on the display, we've got the two waveforms of the currently selected track. In this case, it is one track because I've doubled it over across the two. And you can see that we've got uh, our cue points and so on here. We've also got our current BPM, where the tempo is set to, the percentage of the uh, the tempo fader as well is down here, uh, and various other information about the track. You can see these are color waveforms. At the top here, we have the main waveforms. There's no vertical waveforms, they're only horizontal. Uh, deck one and deck two, you can see that they're both USB one, uh, both off the USB drive that's down here. So by pressing the USB drive, I'm now into this mode here where I can browse what's on it. Uh, by clicking through here, I can browse by artist, album, track, key, playlist, uh, and so on. This is all gonna be very familiar to people used to any of the XDJ stuff because in fact, it is what Pioneer has always done to this date. There is nothing really innovative going on here at all. That said, it all works just fine. Uh, we can use the track filter here to set what the filter is doing. So this will say, look, I only want tracks that are in a related key and within a certain BPM range. And there's various other things you can set here. You can set all your tags in here as well. So there's a lot of control over your searching, which is nice. The keyboard works absolutely fine uh, for searching for stuff down here. So there's no problems with that. It's again, the same as has always been the case with this kind of system. Uh, then over here, uh, we've just got our enter and our back button. Uh, and then down here is uh, a shortcut. And I like the shortcut because this lets you do, do various bits and pieces. So for instance, you can have the load lock on or off. You can choose which deck you're looking at, whether the hot cues auto load, uh, the quantize setting, the waveforms. If you don't like the color waveforms and you want to tone it down a bit, you can have them in blue. This little shortcut key lets you do a few things there. Uh, and then you've got your track matching uh, for finding tracks that might work with the current tracks on that shortcode menu there. And you go straight to your search, so shortcode search, so you're able to hold that one down. Uh, and then track jumps you straight to uh, the track menu for the currently selected area. So this all works okay, but as I said at the beginning of this section, there's nothing new here, even down to the point of only having two loads because it only loads two of the four decks that you've got, which is gonna be one of the major gripes people will have about this, a four deck standalone controller where you can only use two decks uh, from the standalone functionality. The, other, the others are reserved for external sources or for uh, using it with software. 
Let's have a look at the utility menu, which you get to by holding down utility here. And the utility menu is pretty extensive, so I'll talk you through them. Uh, the deck menu has got a load lock and a needle lock. The needle lock will stop you being able to touch the waveforms when the track's playing and skip along. Uh, and the load lock will stop you loading something over the top of the track that's currently playing. You could set your uh, quantized beat value here. You've got your hot cue settings as well. Uh, and auto cue level memory uh, is set there, but there's other settings on there as well. You can have it set to different volumes for when it auto loads. Uh, slip flashing just is whether the slip mode uh, Light flashes when you've got slip mode on, always good because I get stuck a lot of the time with slip mode on, not realizing it. On air display, just telling you whether the track is loaded. Uh, jog display mode, this is what's shown in the middle of the jog wheel. You get a choice of auto, info, simple, or artwork. Auto seems to work just fine there. The brightness of the ring, uh, the ring indicator, whether it's on or off at all. Final speed adjust is whether the track uh, uh, speeds up or slows down when you change the vinyl speed adjust knob uh, so you can have it so the vinyl speed adjust knob only works when you're uh, starting the track or only works when you're finishing it most people will leave that on touch though strangely when you're set to DJ with your laptop with record box the setting is for both of them that doesn't have any make any difference there uh, so the uh, auto play mode this is just for auto playing a playlist that's off so moving away from there onto the mixer we've got an equalizer curve setting a channel fader curve setting cross fader curve setting these are all on the software there's no settings for this on the hardware which you might find quite strange with such a big piece of hardware with so many buttons and knobs but there you go this is all there uh, you've got your master attenuator your booth monitor attenuator here this is uh, for getting your overall output set to where you want them to a peak limiter uh, to stop you distorting when you are driving the whole thing too loud or possibly someone who you've let use your system distorting because you wouldn't do it would you of course you wouldn't uh, your microphone out you can have it going to the booth or not so this is good if you want to turn the mic off for your booth speaker to save feedback uh, the talk over mode there's various options here for talk over mode uh, then we've got uh, level for talk over headphones you can have mono split or stereo again there's no switch on the mixer to do that but you can do it here so it's good that you've got a mono split you might not you might not see that and discount this piece of equipment if you're used to DJ with mono split but it is there um, so various other controls here you've got your control tones for your DVS uh, and you can set the mixer to give MIDI information uh, back to whatever you've got plugged in or not all right then down to general we've just got our language I've got button brightness there I've got LCD brightness jog brightness screen saver you can turn that off which is awesome I can't stand it when I leave the controller running and it turns into a Christmas tree after about 10 minutes uh, you can calibrate the touch display here so that it's accurate uh, and there's various other bits and pieces there so quite a uh, extensive utility menu there full of stuff that you're going to want to set to how you like it and forget it so at the back of the unit these are the link outputs for linking in our cdjs there's a link extension there that's the usb output for my computer then we've got our main audio outputs there's a balanced XLR, balance jack, and unbalanced RCA outputs there, unbalanced send as well. Uh, the ground for your turntables, then onto the inputs. There's line and phono for channels three and four. There's the auxiliary input that I was showing you the controls for a second ago. And there's our Omni for mic one and mic two. Uh, and then the IEC kettle lead there by the on off button. Ends off our controls at the back of the unit. So is this unit worth your time and money? Well, the first thing to say is it's actually reasonably good value for money. It's about $2,000, I think, just over 2,000 euros. Look, this is, for Pioneer, I'd say that's pretty well priced. Uh, you're getting, it looks and feels like, like a, a full mixer, two full CDJs. No, there's no CD slots, but who cares? You know, the USB will give you two decks of complete control with everything you've seen here. That's pretty good value. Now, a lot of people are gonna say, but we wanted four decks, it's got four channels. And that's a valid criticism of this. You know, one of the things that people aren't gonna like about this is it hasn't really moved on from the technology inside the, the previous controllers in the family. The screen's the same, the scrolling speed is the same, the functions are pretty much the same. As I say, only two channels. Uh, you've got no vertical waveforms going on there you can't plug in a usb and have it analyze your tracks on the fly uh, there's no sd card slot there's no built-in hard drive bay for keeping all your music on and organizing your library these are all things that competitor standalone units have got so people will have been thinking come on pioneer come out with something that takes on those units now i'm sure pioneer will at some point this isn't it this is the same 
current technology as far as that side of things goes. So uh, you're may, may be disappointed in that area, but everything around that technology is pretty awesome for the money. You know, it does feel like two CDJs and a DJM. That's awesome. You've got really, really nice effects control. The ability to plug in CDJs and have those on the same record box USB. Uh, and then you can use uh, all kinds of combinations that way as well. Of course, it's going to work with DVS with record box and Serato as well. So, you know, there's a lot of functionality there that's going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people. Um, Size might be something people don't like as well. You know, this thing's massive. It's 13 kilograms. It's huge. It was hard to get it into this office. It's a controller. You know, it's a controller. Controllers with the same functionality, uh, DJ stiff standalone systems even, uh, come in a lot lighter and smaller than this. And it's, it's big for a reason. Some people won't like that, but other people will love it. I think the biggest niche for this is really serious mobile DJs who've got to look the part because it looks the part. I think you guys stateside are going to love this because you just love your big controllers uh, and it's a big controller. It looks awesome to use it. There's no messing around like this, you know, and that image matters a lot of the time uh, and especially for mobile DJs with DJs charging a lot of money for their services. They want to turn up with big gear that looks the part. Look, it's really awesome fun to DJ on. It really is. It feels just like using a club system. You know, the very fact that you've got something that can be used as a controller with Serato that feels just like using a club system for two grand is pretty cool. So that size thing kind of depends on you, right? It's either going to be a minus or it's going to be a plus. So other, uh, other plus points here. Uh, I love the EQ on the Master Out. I think that's absolutely brilliant. I just think, I wish more controllers would have that. I love the two mic inputs. I love the feedback control on the two mic inputs. And back to what I said at the beginning of this summing up, I like the price. I think for the money, you're getting an awful lot of controller here. Is it the standalone four channel, all singing, all dancing controller that people were hoping Pioneer, are hoping Pioneer will bring out at some point? No. Is it an absolutely awesome take on Pioneer's current technology for standalone DJ control, DJ systems? Yes, it is. It really does feel great to use. Anyone who's used any of the previous systems, as I said, the, the RX, uh, the XDJ RX, the XDJ RR, or the XDJ uh, RX2 will feel instantly at home on it. Uh, and it's got so much more functionality than those systems, so much more in the effects department, uh, and lots and lots and lots of tweaks. They all pile up. That means you can do a whole lot more with it than with that unit. And a few quirks ironed out, a normal lead, for plugging in your laptop is one of them. Overall, pretty good Pioneer and the price is excellent. Uh, this has been our first look review of the Pioneer XDJR. Z or RZ, let us know what you think about it. Has it got what you wanted on it? Is there anything I haven't covered you'd like to hear? Please let us know underneath in the feedback. We'll answer all of your questions. And there's a lot more detail, including updates for this, over on the full review on Digital DJ Tips, which is linked to if you're watching on YouTube from underneath this video. If you found this useful, please do share, like, and follow. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you again very soon. Meanwhile, get good, get out there and make the moments.